everyone. Glad to see everyone again. And today I wanted to talk about being accountable for yourself, being accountable for your life. Ah, just moving my laptop from one side of my room to the other, one side of my office to the other. Um, but being accountable for yourself, what you do, what you say, be accountable for the experiences that you may have. And so people may, and, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is to know, to let you know that, you know, victimhood does not count. Victimhood, uh, holds you back. Granted, there are things that have, that has happened, that is happening to us to some degree that we have no control over, but it's up to you to either sit and wallow and complain and stay in that energy, stay in that victim mindset or survive that experience. I think I, you know, it seems like a lot of people are waiting for someone or something to come and save them. Uh, newsflash, no one is coming to save you. You've got to save yourself. The government is not coming to save you. Jesus isn't coming to save you. You've got to save yourself. The, you know, the knight on the big, beautiful horse, not coming to save you. You've got to save yourself. Not your mother, not your father, not the boyfriend, not the husband, not the girlfriend, not the wife. No one. No one is coming to save you. It is just you. You have got to stop abdicating your responsibilities in your life. You need to show up in your own life. You know, a lot of people, and this was including me, uh, especially before, I would say in the beginning and before I realized that I was on a spiritual journey and started to actively participate, um, I thought someone was coming to save me. Even in the beginning of my, my spiritual journey, it was, oh, if I just meditate on it, uh, it'll just come to my doorstep. It'll just show up. You know, again, not actively participating. A lot of us passively participate in our lives. We abdicate our own power and then we leave it to someone else to be responsible, to get us what we want, to make the changes that we think we need to, to, to make, or it's, I'm not gonna be happy until this person or this thing changes. Gonna be miserable for a really long time. That's just another type of victimhood. That's just another type of abdicating your power. And so, as long as you are waiting for someone to do something, then in a lot of people's minds, it's like, well, no, I'm not gonna be happy and things aren't going to change because this person is not changing. This person is not giving me what I want as opposed to, I need to go get what I want. I need to give myself what I want. What do I need, how, not how, what do I need to do to get this thing? How do I need to move forward so that I'm able to get what it is that I want? A lot of people are not willing to put the work in. They're not willing to do the work and they're certainly not willing to take responsibility because taking responsibility also means if you have a negative experience what did you do? What energy did you put out there for that to ricochet back to you where now you are experiencing this thing? If we are the creators of our life, and we are, people, a lot of people end up abdicating that power and create by accident. Or, I mean, you're not necessarily creating by accident, but you're unknowingly creating because you're not doing it intentionally. I think that's a better way of putting it. So 
you are, you're creating these things, you're creating these experiences and you don't realize it. And you think these experiences are coming from out here. Meanwhile, those experiences are just a reflection of what's going on internally. Your exterior reflects your interior. If you have a cluttered home, I guarantee you, your mind is cluttered. You have a cluttered desk, I guarantee you, your mind is cluttered. It's just a reflection. If there is a lot of turmoil, inner turmoil and drama happening um, to you, within you, I guarantee you, your life is a mess. It's filled with drama. A lot of people said, I don't understand. I don't know why this keeps happening. It's happening because of you. you. You are the reason why it's happening. You are the alpha and the omega of your life. You are the reason why it's happening. And the response that I get when I, you know, when I say like, you know, everything that's happening to you is because of you. You're the one who's creating these experiences for whatever reason. Well, I'm the one that's doing that. Well, you know, no, that's not right because this person needs to change in order for me to be happy. But they really don't. You're re and I'm not saying that person is, is that person isn't a complete jerk. What I'm saying is that person is going to be that person. The way you respond is fully up to you. That's your responsibility. It's not the person's responsibility to change. It's your responsibility to react the way you are going to react. And if you know that person is the way that they are, leave them alone. And just assuming that it's not a coworker or something, because I mean, we all get into those, those work scenarios where your coworker or your boss is a jerk. Avoid them as much as you can or find a new job. If something is your responsibility, you can change it. That's the upside of accountability. If something is your responsibility, you can change it. If something is happening because of you, you can change it. As opposed to, I don't know why this is happening. It's not my fault. This person did this, this person did that. I have to wait for this person to change. I have to wait for this situation to change in order for me to be happy or feel better or change myself. I have to wait for that. As long as you're doing that, you will never be happy. And you also give away your power to make any changes in your life. Because you have to wait for this thing to change in order for you to be happy, as opposed to, you know what? I don't understand it. I know, you know, somehow I'm making this experience happen. I do not like this experience. So I need to take the bull by the horns and I need to fix it. I need to change it. I need to move on from it. In a lot of instances, it's hard. It's hard because you have to face yourself. You have to face the fact that you created this monster. This is all on you. And you're going to have to get up and you're going to have to show up in your life as opposed to sitting back, passively, passively participating in your life and then wondering why things aren't working out for you. Well, I told such and such that I don't appreciate the way they are and they need to change and I don't understand why it's not working and why they're not changing. They don't have to change. You have the option, not being around them, you have the option of changing your reaction to that person, place, or thing. The other piece of that is too, if something is triggering you to respond in a visceral manner, my question to you is, are you doing any, are you doing a deep dive into why that's triggering you? People that 
you negatively have negative reactions towards because Lord knows that I still do people that you have negative reactions towards. It is an opportunity. It doesn't feel like it at the time. I know it doesn't. It is an opportunity for you to take a step back and understand why is this person triggering me so much? What is happening in this dynamic? that this person, I just want to ah strangle this person. What is happening in this dynamic? Again, this is something that you will find in meditation. This is something where you've got to look within yourself. It can be something, I mean, shoot, I have had those instances and I've had to, I'm like, all right, like this is just not a one-off. Like this person, I don't know what's going on. They are just irking me to no end. Oh gosh, this was a person that I worked with, several jobs by the way, and irked me to no end. And it's I don't and it's not like they were doing anything crazy. It's just I don't know what it was about them, their energy or whatever. It just <sighs> was not a happy camper. And so like I had to take a step back and I had to figure out, okay, why? Why are you bothering me so much? What are you doing? Is it your energy? What are you saying? Why are you, why are you bothering me so much? And why am I letting that happen? Um, I think until, up until we last worked together, I got much better at it. Um, she still annoyed me to some degree, but I wasn't pissed off all the time because I was just pissed off all the time because she was just around me and she had to be around me because we work together. Oh, and now that, uh, gosh, this was years ago. And I was, um, I mean, I was working from home, but I still had to come into the office every so often. And it just, we had the stupid cubbies and open floor plan concept, which just for an introvert, that's just a little slice of hell. And just like, just always in my face. Like, you've got to get out of my face. Like, you just got to let me. And so I would just keep to myself, which actually annoyed her because she needed to talk all the time. I'm not that person. I can go days without speaking to someone and be completely content with that. Um, but once I took control of that situation to figure out why I was reacting like that, it got much better. And that's been the theme throughout my life. When I take control of a situation, it gets better because, and the situation itself stays the same, but you know, you change your mind, you change the world. The situation got better because I saw it differently. I perceived it differently. So it got better for me. I also, because I removed all of that emotion, I was better able to deal with it, to digest it, to understand it. And so I wasn't putting myself in the middle of it all the time. I was sitting in the background, looking at it, when I needed to step in to respond to it, I responded to it, and then I took myself out of it. I, I, what I've come to realize, because my demeanor has gotten way more calm, uh, to the point where if I don't put any effort into the way that I speak, I speak with a monotone, you know, I, I, I just, now I am just way more calm. I'm way more laid back. I'm much more on an even keel. If something irritates me, I don't act out. I just, all right, you know, this is bothering me. And this is bothering me and I need to figure out why this thing is bothering me, but I don't act out on anyone. I don't like put it out there and get my craziness all over other people. And so they got to deal with it and I got to deal. I don't do that anymore. Now it's like, okay, it's bothering me. And, I, and, and you know, I need to figure out what it is. And am I going to be around? Am I not going to be around it? 
and take it from there. But all that to say, show up in your life. Stand up, show out, show up in your life. Take responsibility. Take the bulls by the bull by the horns and do what you need to do to understand why things, why you are being passive in your life. P being people placing things that make you upset, those are triggers, those are reflections back at you to say, hey, hello, you need to look into this. You look need to look into yourself as to figure out why this is bothering you. And I promise you it'll make you a better person. It's hard, but it'll make you a better person. Participate, be an active participant in your life. Show up in your life and be accountable for yourself, what you do, and what you say. Until next time, love and light. Ah, bye.